Hi, I'm Gene. Welcome to True to Earth TV. Today we're talking about the question, is there a bomb in your basement? Well, it could probably be interpreted as, could there be a bomb in your basement? Now, one thing I want to get over uh, real quick is LP tanks, liquid petroleum tanks for like your gas grill, things like that, out of the house, out of the garage, outside never ever inside any enclosure if they leak you could have a bomb in your basement LP gas is different than natural gas natural gas is lighter than air and when it leaks it rises up LP is heavier than air so what it does is it stays low and there was a case of, um oh a year or two ago where uh, a guy came home from work and was uh, going out and his gas grill tank was in the garage and it was leaking and he went in the garage and started the car before he opened the garage door and the spark from the starter motor um, unfortunately you know blew up and killed him so that aside get that out of the house get those out of the garage or the barn wherever those are to be outside your other potential for explosion in a house, believe it or not, is your water heater. And in the early 1900s, this was prevalent. Also, steam, steam boilers were prevalent to explode. Steam locomotives, steam ships. Uh, you can look this up on the internet. Look up steamship explosions, steam locomotive explosions, and you can also put in your search engine, water heater explosions you're going to find a whole ton of videos. Two in particular you want to watch are the Watts Company video and the Mythbusters video where they actually look at the Watts video which was made in the 40s and try to debunk it and it turns out that, that you know it's true. Now I'm going to explain to you what happens and why certain little tiny things are important. Now your water heater these days is pretty well protected. It's got good controls, it's got a safety valve, and so does your boiler. But these things have to be maintenance. You have to check them and sometimes they have to be replaced every few years. Now, your standard boiler initially had no protection and houses and buildings were leveled and finally they came out with protection in the form of a pressure relief valve. So if the pressure rose, this would open up at a set level and release. On your standard house, these are set for 30 pounds. So your boiler is usually never really a threat, although it, it can be. All right? it, you, know, you want to check these as well in the same manner that I'm going to tell you about your water heater. They're supposed to be flushed every year and then checked to see if they seat. Now your water heaters became a separate problem and they go into this in the in the Watts and the Mythbusters videos. These have an inherent problem with the, the additional pressure because your boiler is running at low pressure usually and so is your steam boiler but your water heater is running at your faucet pressure or your domestic pressure or your city pressure. Now if you have a well it could be 40 to 60 psi if you have city water, it could be 100 PSI. Now, in physics, as you raise the pressure of the water, the pressure, the, the, excuse me, the temperature that it boils at also rises with it. So we all know water boils at 212 degrees at sea level. Okay, now as you go up away from sea level, that changes because there's less pressure on the water and, it, and the actual temperature drops but when you put it inside a vessel like a water heater and you raise the pressure the, the temperature that it boils at also rises and when you're at 70 psi or 100 psi you have to get over 300 degrees before that water will even think about boiling and this is what engineers discovered at Watts in the 40s that pressure didn't pressure protection didn't do anything for water heaters 
what, you, what they did was they came up with a temperature probe that's in the relief valve. So you have what's called the temperature pressure relief valve or TMP valve. And these are typically set to go off at 150 PSI or 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And these go in the water heater. So you've got temperature protection and pressure protection. The problem is after a while you're going to get sediment built up inside towards the valve outlet. That's why they're supposed to be flushed and checked every year. And yeah, every couple of years you're going to probably have to replace them. This is eight bucks. Eight dollars. It takes two seconds to replace. And you're going to risk everything you own on eight dollars. You know, and a lot of HVAC contractors and plumbers, they'll, they'll, they'll bypass checking these, even especially your electric water heaters. But there was a case about 10 years ago where a 20 gallon electric water heater had a malfunctioning temperature control and a malfunctioning TMP valve. The people heard it, they, they heard percolating inside the water heater before they went to bed. And they went down and read the side of the label and it tells you all the things you're supposed to do if you hear this or that. And they followed the instructions and killed the breaker. The problem was the tank was already past the point of no return. So much heat had been stored in there, it was going to let go. You have to remember that BTUs, heat, when you have a fire or electric elements or gas fire or whatever, Heat is energy, and you're adding it to this. If water can't boil because it's under pressure, and you're just adding energy to this, and eventually it's going to go. It's not the pressure. It's, it's actual heat energy. And what it does is it ruptures the tank, and the, usually the bottom of these go. So what happened was this couple went to bed, and next thing they knew, they were flying out of their bed because the water heater blew out the bottom, it went up through the floor, through the roof, blew out the chimney, wrecked the house, knocked it off its foundation, blew the garage, they had a walk-in basement with garage doors, blew that down the street, and that's what saved their lives, partly. When the water heater took off, they'll take off just like a rocket, and a lot of the pressure got taken out by blowing the garage doors out down the street. It still went up through the house and melted the sheetrock and insulation because it's, it's steam. It's, it's, it's an, an incredible amount of energy. Now, they were in a waterbed, and as the explosion ripped up, it flipped their waterbed up, tossed them out, and, and covered them with it, and it saved their lives. But it, now we're talking about a 30 gallon, t I mean, that was a 20 gallon electric water heater. A 30, 40 gallon water heater, you look at more and more energy. So check these and make sure that they're replaced. They're so easy that all you have to do is close the in and out valves, go into the tank, drop the pressure. If, if this has got, if this still has, you know, if, if you open this and, and it'll, it'll, you know, blow out, but you can't get it to stop, you need a new one. But you just, you just blow the pressure off with this, unscrew it, have one, a new one pipe doped all ready to go, pop it in, turn the valves on, you're done. It takes like 10 minutes. Even if you have to hook a small hose up and drain the pressure off, you don't have to drain the tank. All you have to do is drop the pressure. And you'll, you'll, when you take this out, no water will come out. You pop a new one back in, and you're done. It's so simple, and yet it's not to be valves, temperature and pressure valves. Change them. Every few years, five years, ten years tops. I mean, ten years. This is. I mean, this is done in ten years. Uh, what you could do, if you really want to be conscious, is put the date on a tag or write on it with a magic marker when it was put in, and that way you know. You know, you don't. Was it a few years ago? Was it five years ago? I don't remember. Well, put the date on on things when you install them, and then you'll know. For True to Earth TV, I'm Gene. Have a great day. And don't let a bomb grow in your basement.